Hello everyone, this is Dark Spy, so <clears throat> let's see what we got here. X-Men Days of Future Past. Wow, do you man that that is like a wow movie. I mean seriously. So yeah, I was just thinking now of how to rank it and the fact of mutant deaths. I mean, seriously mutant deaths. I mean X-Men 1, there is no death. X-Men 2 Lady Deathstrike or Deathstrike, but do you really care about it? Oh yeah, and Jean kind of died, I guess. But do you really care about Deathstrike? Not really. X-Men 3, you had Jean who died, Scott who died, and Professor X who died. Three people who died. And let's see. Yeah, three people who died. And then you had First Class. No, oh yeah, one person died. Yeah, that, that's some bull crap on that one. I claim bull crap on that one. Seriously, bull crap. You didn't have to kill that guy. You didn't have to kill him, but of course you have to kill somebody. Somebody has to die. And, oh, actually, there was two people who died. Yeah, it was two. Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> yeah, so... The Innocent Mutant died and the Mastermind died as well. Which you also saw Magneto in his first accurate costume. You know, first costume that actually is there like, that is Magneto. That's definitely Magneto. And let's see what else. Wolverine, two people died? Mm, no, I think only one person died. Yeah, one person died out of it. And yet again... Why in the world did he have to die too? Seriously, why? <clears throat> of course you have the Wolverine. No one really died that was a mutant. Was a mutant, not at all. And I think it's basically everything that we have up to this point. So, with X-Men's Days of Future Past. I don't know if you want me to actually do spoilers and do an actual review on it. Let's see how many comments I can get underneath. If you give me enough comments, m annoy the crap out of me with comments. As if you're Spider-Man and Spider-Man 3 hitting me with all those web balls and I'm Harry Osborn. I did mention Spider-Man 3. God help me. And yeah, if you give me enough comments, if you send too many comments, I will straight up give you a review on it. Other than that, if it's just like what it is right now, then yeah, I'm not going to do a review. What I'm here is actually to talk about the things that has been affected by this movie. But I will mention one thing is the fact of how did Kitty Pride get those types of powers? Yeah, that's one thing is like how did Kitty Pride actually get that telepathic powers? That's one thing I'm going to have to do some research on is actually find out who did it, which I thought it was magneto and professor x using both their powers to send someone back in time that's what i thought it was but oh they had some liberties yeah you... okay any well let me just finish up with the deaths my goodness how many deaths technically iceman died twice yeah he died twice jeez he died twice you had storm who died yeah, this is spoilers. Well, technically, it's not spoilers. Iceman, you wouldn't know. But Storm in uh, credit, not credits, in the trailer, you saw the freaking Sentinel come at Storm. Yeah, she died from that scene. You technically did see it coming a little bit. Anyways, enough with all the dying. And let us let me just say this, is that from first class all the way to this, this actually is 11 years later. So, if you were looking at my previous X-Men, huh? You actually would notice that I tried to get Nightcrawler, Mystique, and Azazel matched up. And it works. Which, it worked at first, but now since you have this 11 years thing, and the fact that, sorry for the spoilers, but most of Magneto's crew, which you wonder where his crew was when X-Men, the first X-Men movie came out. Well, we found out. It turns out that they all got killed. Yeah, I'm sorry for another spoiler, but yeah, they got killed. So that means Azazel had like at least less than 11 years to knock up Mystique. Mystique's feeling, oh my gosh, I can't take care of this kid and revenge my teammates, whatever you want to call them, my family. 
while raising this kid so I have to drop it off so it still works but that means that you have 1962 to 1970 I'll just close it in 1970 so that means maybe if he was born like between that let's say 1965 funny I got him up with that one 1965 all the way to 2002 then that means that he would actually have been 37 years old that that works that works I fixed that so there you go it works the worst part about it is if you do want to look at something crazy uh when Magneto gets his helmet which he doesn't have the same uniform as he did when X-Men First Class ended but it's been 11 years lots of people changed their costume in 11 years Spider-Man did it like at least three times I think yeah, at least three times or so. And it was less than 11 years. But anyways, yeah, when he was retrieving his helmet, you saw that... I think it was Banshee. Yeah, I think it might have been Banshee. Or, no, it was the other guy. The other guy that you actually saw in the camp. Which I think that was the same guy. But he could also have been dead. I'm not sure. But, yeah, you saw his suit in there and you also saw angel's wing which is kind of like oh my gosh yeah you do have to admit that's like a oh my gosh moment why would you take angel's wing cut it off and then have it in storage heck it technically should be organic so that means that there is no way possible you could actually have it held there for that amount of time you know i bet it might have been like a year or so but we can't really tell for sure. So, yeah. Alright, uh, let's see what else we got. Sorry guys, I'm just checking out something. That's interesting. I just found, but it's not X-Men, so I can't say anything about it. But it is very interesting what I found. Anyways, let's continue on. So, yeah, so Nightcrawler still could have been born. There's nothing. I mean, yeah, you could actually just say, ah, screw it. Nightcrawler's his own man. We don't know how he was born or anything, even though we do know. It's just that it doesn't fix. I made it so it works. So there you go. It still works. It's, and plus, she kind of felt very, very... Sh she actually cried when Azazel died. She found out Azazel died. So that means one thing. They had a romance. So there you go. It works perfectly. It does work perfectly. As for Doctor... I mean, sorry, not Doctor. As for Professor X. Do I have any way to actually say how he got his body and stuff back? Not sure. I'm not really sure. I mean, he could have done Astro Projection... Or just the fact that he got the fat man and he was able to change or rearrange himself or astral projection. I can't really tell you how it worked. How it works. I can't really tell you. Technically, I can tell you that wherever... No, no, no. The man had to be continuing because, yeah. Hmm. Could he actually detect... Xavier if the X gene wasn't in that guy huh yeah that's yeah that's interesting yeah so that guy I don't know where he is who knows where that body is but if he did astral projection that means that that guy has to be in a safe place where no one's able to touch him and besides he's not even a mutant so they will have no reason at all to actually touch that man so that means Xavier is safe, even though they did show Xavier getting stabbed. So yeah, sorry for another little spoiler thing. I mean, I just have to figure out how it works. But <clears throat> yeah, right now we're just not going to touch that. How about that? We're not going to touch that part. <sighs> so <clears throat> let's see. X... Wolverine, basically Wolverine, we saw in Wolverine Origins, even though this movie technically 
destroyed what happened in X-Men 3. X-Men 3 actually doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, so you have a nice little curvy plane where I technically will say they can go Ultimate's route this time and see where that leads. Of course, they can continue on and do their own thing. I mean, whatever you want. So, let's see. Yeah, Wolverine. In the Wolverine Origins, basically, you see he went through all that war and stuff. And then after he went through all that war, he ended up in Canada with his lovely wife. That's AKA the Silver Wolf. <clears throat> oh, Fox. Sorry, Silver Fox. So to try to figure this thing out which i did in the previous one but not in depth you really have to look at what cyclops is along with xavier xavier is actually hmm is he walking no no he was i don't think he walked or did he i'm not sure but basically <clears throat> You have Cyclops, I think he was a teenager, and let's just say that in the actual movie, the three movies, he was like 30s, 30s, 30s mid-30s. So that means that he had like at least 14 to maybe 20 years difference. No, not 20 years, less than 20 years more. Yeah, so with that said then, hmm. That means that it had to be like in the 80s. So I guess it does match up, doesn't it? Even though I don't I don't remember them actually doing the whole uh let's see what we can do. Hmm uh and not only that, but Stryker actually was a bit older then, so hmm. I can't really tell yeah that's like one thing that's kind of like i don't know because you had striker who is like a bit older close to what he looked like in x-men 2 but a little bit younger than that and then you had striker in the 70s and in the 60s and he looks young so i don't know maybe from all that stress of all that stress of him having a mutant son and the war and everything maybe he gained weight and started getting gray hair very very fast and he actually maybe is in his mid 40s instead of being like in his yeah technically i would say mid 40s mid he would look like 50s close to 55 or something and well <clears throat> i guess it kind of work i suppose it worked is the fact that he had too much stress yeah he had lots of stress and I guess technically, yeah, his son gave him a lot of stress and he had no way to do anything. I bet stress can do a lot of crap to people. I mean, look at the presidency. You had Barack Obama who didn't have any gray hair. And then a year later, you see that he actually has some gray hair on him. So many presidents who didn't have gray hair. And now they have like bits of gray hair after the presidency is over. So, yeah. I guess it kind of will work. Just to mention some things, the fact that Magneto said, I wonder what happens if those weren't metal, along with actually putting metal parts in Wolverine so he's able to throw him and toss him away, which, jeez. Yeah, Magneto is one cold-blooded... Shut your mouth. <laughs> so with that... Mm, excuse me. So with that, man, yeah. I just have one question: Is how did Sabretooth become so bestial? I mean, that technically was a bit of Brian Singer's fault, even though you can blame the people who made Wolverine Origins too. But one of them gonna have to give in the fact of having him say, Wolverine. Brother, come on, you have to remember who I am. Instead of just fighting and brawling, I mean, geez. Yeah, I mean, fill in the blanks. First fill in the blanks, then fight until, until oblivion or something. I mean, geez. Um, I was about to say something else, but I kind of forgot.
Excuse me. Oh, oh yeah, the fact of Toad. He had a f you saw Toad in 2000s, and you technically do see Toad again, technically. So that means from the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s. Hmm. I guess he was in his 30s or 40s. Yeah, you yeah you, know, you could pull off that Toad who ate his, the pigeon and got struck by lightning by storm. Yeah, he got better looking, I guess. <laughs> or you could just basically say that's another mutant, and Toad that we know from 2000s is dead. Straight up dead, electrocuted. <laughs> Mystique, on the other hand. Wow, Mystique. Well, does this mean that Mystique is lighthearted or what? Yeah. And let's not forget that Mystique got stabbed by Wolverine. And she got gunshot. She just got shot by Magneto. So yeah, we know like if there's a few wounds, and plus the whole yeah. So what happened with this movie is that it made it so that humans and mutants have a little bit of a better appreciation, I guess, quote unquote, or more the fact of. You shouldn't kind of be afraid of us and we won't attack you and all that. So I guess just by what we got here, I would just say they didn't have their britches all in a bunch and they're a bit kinder to mutants nowadays. Yeah, so in this new future one that they created that replaced X-Men 3, you now have something that actually bridges mutants and humans together. Even though, you know, if they do go Ultimate's route, they won't exactly have the nice and shiny thing. Eventually, they'll actually start hating mutants again. But the good news is that they got over the whole... Um, you know, you know the thing. Yeah, you know that stupid robot. Even though you'd have to admit, if you did see the movie, wow, and the whole, ha, you made them to attack mutants and look at you. Look at them now. Man. Alright, is there anything else to actually mention? Well, the only thing to mention is something that's a bit of a spoiler, the fact of how it ended and the fact that Wolverine will have like lots of catching up to do because this is now the future where he created, meaning that he's the only, yeah, like he said, he's the only one who will remember things how it once was and now he'll remember how it is now, even though technically I say this is a ripple effect on how that Wolverine before he returned lived because then that means that if Jean didn't die then what exactly in the Wolverine that he saw like for instance he saw glimpses and saw Jean kept on showing up and kept on doing everything giving him lots of grief since Scott is still alive that means that Jean won't actually be like seducing him a little bit is that what's going on here because yeah <clears throat> yeah but uh you gotta be happy that scott nah, you have to be happy that scott is back and it looks like not only wolverine got screwed over but kitty pride got screwed over too because notice that in there rogue and iceman are together still so that means that kitty didn't happen so let's see um that means in X-Men 2? Is it X-Men 2? Or maybe X-Men 3. I'm not sure. But I could tell you the whole skating thing. The fact that Iceman took her skating. Yeah, it most likely didn't happen or was just a friendly thing instead of a togetherness thing. Oh yeah, it was X-Men 3. <clears throat> yeah, so it looks like Kitty got screwed over, but... Could they actually, which I'm just saying, you guys already shook hands with Sony. Why can't you take the actress who played Kitty Pride and allow Spider-Man to date her? 
Come on, this will be the first time and the perfect time to actually have, even though, yeah, I can see that it won't exactly be able to fit in there just right, but why not? Just have a nice little flirty thing going on where you have, oh yeah, he's not in high school anymore. <laughs> well, thanks a lot. He's not in high school anymore. You guys were specifically said he was going to be in high school for more than what happened with him. Like, um, you just graduated him. Now, he, well, you'll figure out some way to put Kitty Pride and Spider-Man together. I would love to see that in a film. I actually would love to see it. And the fact that he's like, Kitty, no. And then Kitty goes phases through things. And he's like, oh, what the? <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. Yeah. Let's see Green Goblin tries to kill her now. She phases through the wind. Yeah, Spider-Man just straight up webs up to the glider and beat the crap out of him. He's like, hey, wait. What about your girlfriend? And like, that girlfriend could take care of herself. And she just phases through the glass. Phases, phases, phases. Landed on, lands on the gear. Then she phases down again. Grabs the bar, phases down again, made it down. Yeah, and then Harry Osborn's like, holy frick, what the hell? And he's getting beaten the frick down because he's stupid not to know that, oh, yeah, he's dating the X-Men. <laughs> yeah, that was just like a side story of what if could happen. But will it happen? Sadly, you can say no, even if. Avi Arad sends Spider-Man to X-Men to do a cameo. He might actually do the same thing he did with Avengers, which he said, make him the lead character. It's like, okay, um, it's called X-Men or it's called Avengers. Not everyone needs to get spotlighted on it. And plus you have movie franchises of your own, even though technically everyone does, except for... Hulk and the others, the other characters who actually came from other movies like Thor or now Captain America Winter Soldier or Iron Man 2. Yeah, I mean, technically two people came from Iron Man 2. Oh, I didn't think of that. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, Rhodey even, technically Rhodey has his own way of stuff because he was in Iron Man 2 and 3, so, yeah. Mm, excuse me. Alright, so let's just wrap this up. <clears throat> With this new movie, what happened is that you will now wonder what happens in the X, in the Wolverine. The fact of him... Maybe not even getting a romantic relationship with Gene or the fact that the relationship was not as hot as it was in the previous timeline. <clears throat> so, yeah, let's see what else. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. Shoot, is there anything else that... Oh, yeah, X-Men 3 never happened, so whoever died in that is safe. Somehow safe. <laughs> X-Men First Class. Well, technically now, since this one, you actually come to the question of... Then, does that mean that Beast kind of... Yeah, so Beast created this formula that actually stops his powers or inhibits the powers so does that mean that in the future they could actually go to the wrong hands and something 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 instead of getting leech yeah that's kind of messed up they actually used the leech guy to make a serum that doesn't really work but technically it just proves the fact of they have to do the same thing that they did with right now is the fact that they had to keep on taking it to change his powers well not change his powers but to make sure his powers aren't really inhibited yeah so let's see is there anything else I think that's about it yeah that's pretty much it we don't really know what other things that actually has been affected with this timeline 
we have no idea if Stryker didn't actually die since if Gene is still there, that means maybe the Phoenix didn't happen. So if the Phoenix didn't happen at all, the Dark Phoenix didn't happen at all. Then does that mean that the place where he got stuff, the place where he got everything, Sorry, guys. Yeah, so that means where he got experimented all that stuff doesn't mean that that place is still around, meaning that dam didn't break. And if so, then how did the dam not break then? What stopped it from break not breaking? Iceman got his powers to a hyped level that he actually was able to ice the whole entire place. Unlikely, but hey, we don't know how it worked. <clears throat> and from mutants who've been killed, and since technically it's a ripple effect going on here, yeah, and chaos theory, you know? Chaos theory is just like what happened with Brand New Day and One More Day. Yeah, so we have no idea who Magneto actually has in his court. Heck, it could be basically be x-men evolution the end the fact that magneto actually joined up with the x-men and he's now there too but they would actually have had him there to be like holy crap so it looks like he's still out there and i technically would think that since his path has changed just a little bit that might actually mean that he could have actually changed his too. But the sucky part is that anyone that died beforehand hasn't been saved. Yeah, that's kind of sucky. So I think that's basically all I have right here. This is all that actually has been here. I don't really know anything else that could actually do anything but mm. so yeah thank you for listening if you want me to actually do the review even though i'll put a side note lots of people not quicksilver but how they actually had quicksilver in the movie even though it was very short quote unquote short it was like the best thing i've ever seen i mean they picked the best guy to do all of that he did a marvelous job Jennifer Lawrence did a marvelous job too. Too bad she left, but at least she left on a good note. So even if she does come back to the come back to the franchise, it's good. I wonder, are they going to replace Mystique? Are they going to get the same person who played Mystique throughout the first three movies, or are they going to find someone new and say, "Bam, there we go, she's the new Mystique." I say please return to the old Mystique. Give her her job back. Yeah, I mean, it's not fair to actually have her seen naked. <laughs> have her seen actual human naked with all the, all the cure thing to actually shot her, turn to weaponized form, and yeah, I think it's, it's, it, she deserves to actually get her job back and show that she's a different person or something's different heck maybe even do x-men evolution and the fact that she actually now wears a white dress <laughs> but hey whatever all i have to say is this was a very very good movie stay to the very end if you don't you'll punch yourself in the face also they technically didn't do it the way that it should have been done, which is like after the meaningful trail, meaningful credits, they show it. No, it's all the way at the end. You have to stay all the way through the end. It's kind of like what happened with the Avengers. The fact that they have it like all the way at the end. So thank you for listening. I'm sorry this was very, very long. I was just thinking and making sure that everything is all mentioned. If I did forget something, which I might actually rewatch a few things, and then 
or maybe in a later date as soon as it comes out on DVD and get to Wolverine, I'll actually re-watch and give you even more details. Thank you for listening and click down below if you want to hear X-Men Hans, the ones that I found from the Wolverine all the way to the Wolverine and stay tuned. Thank you for listening. Peace out.